Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this interactive floating letters. First things first, let's upload the font. So come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, click create folder. I'm going to call my folder fonts. Then I'm going to click this arrow here and then click upload file. And this is where you're going to be dragging and dropping your file into. So actually you can upload your font in the same directory as all of these files here. But the reason that I'm putting it in the fonts folder is because I think it's a little bit cleaner and in case I want to download multiple font file later. All right. Now what you need to do is that you need to use a function called preload to preload our font. So function preload. And then you also want to create a new variable, which I'm going to call font. And we're going to set font to another function called load font. And then the argument that we're going to put in here is actually the location where the font file is. So in my case, it's in the folder called fonts and the file name is roboto-regular.ttf. So that's exactly what I'm going to put in. Don't forget to put a quotation mark and then fonts backslash roboto dash regular.ttf. All right, and then let's click run just to make sure everything is okay. And everything is okay. All right, so next, we're going to be writing the text. And what I'm going to be writing is actually a letter of an alphabet. So how about we create an array of alphabets, which I'm going to call alphabets. And it's going to be an array of uppercase letters. All right, and then I'm going to also create another variable called letter. And in setup, I'm going to randomize what this letter is going to be to get a random value inside an array. I can just put in a function called random and then put in the name of my array, which is alphabets. And this way, if I were to print letter just to see, get O, A, W, J, W again. So we get a random letter inside the alphabets array. Great. Next, we're going to draw our letter on the canvas. And we can do that using a function called text. And we're going to put in three arguments. The first one is what is the text that we're going to be writing, which is our variable letter. And then the second and the third are going to be the X and Y coordinate of the bottom left corner of the bounding box of where we want the text to be. So let's say we want it to be in the middle of the canvas. So with the better by two and then height divided by two, then let's click run. All right. So the bottom left is actually at the middle of the canvas. So we're going to put a few more functions. So the first one is how about text font and we're going to put in our font. And then how about text size? What if we set the size to be let's do 50. All right, see, so that's bigger now. And then I also want to actually instead of putting width divided by two and height divided by two here, I want to use a translate function and then translate the origin to this point then I can put in 0 comma 0 here and we should get the same thing. And the reason that I want to do this is because I want to be able to rotate my letter around an origin point. Let's say we want to rotate by 30 degrees and because I'm using a degree mode, we need to also put angle mode and change it to degrees. All right. And as you can see now, it's rotating around the origin point here. And just to show you what if I say angle here, and then I'm going to map angle to my mouse location, mouse x location from zero to width, and then between degrees of zero to 360. All right, great. Okay, so next we're going to put this set of code in a class. So let's come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, click create file. I'm going to call it letter.js. And then before we start writing a class, what we want to do is that we want to go to index.html. 
then come to this line of code here, copy and paste it, and then put in the name of the new JavaScript file, which is letter.js. And this is how we integrate a new JavaScript file into the program. All right, so now we're ready. Let's go to letter.js, start with the word class, and then I'm going to call this class letter. And then inside the constructor function, I'm going to declare, let's start with x and y location. So this.x equals to x, and then this.y equals to y. And then I'm going to create a method called display. And then this is essentially the code that we already wrote, which is this. We don't really need angle anymore. All right. Okay, and instead of translating to the middle of the canvas, we're going to put in this.x and then this.y. And then how about we initialize the angle to be at zero. Actually, let's randomize it between 0 and 360. Okay, let's just try to create an object letter. So let's go back to sketch.js, and then we're going to, how about just declare a variable called L, and then inside setup, L is going to be a new letter object. And also, let's put it just in the middle of the canvas. So width divided by 2, and then height divided by 2. Then in draw, we just need to call the display function. Oh, angle here has to be this dot angle. And actually also, I want to move all of these inside my class too, actually. So let's put the alphabet inside here. So this will be this dot alphabets and then letter this dot letter and this dot letter will be a random value inside this dot alphabets array right okay i think this should work now and then we need to delete this and then this needs to be this dot letter okay i promise this time yay all right, so now we have all of these random letters that are at a random angle in the middle of our canvas. Great, so how do we make it interactive? What I want to do is that every time I drag the mouse, I want to create new letter objects. So instead of actually creating an object inside setup here, what we're gonna do is that we're going to write a new function called mouse drag. And mouse drag actually is a built-in function within p5.js that gets called every time you drag your mouse. So what we want to do is that first we want to create an array. Let's call it letters. And then we're going to use a function called push, which will be pushing new objects inside the letters array. And all we need to do is that we put the name of the array and then put in dot push. And what are we pushing in? We're pushing in a new letter object, right? So we can just copy this new letter. And we can delete this. But instead of putting it at the middle of the canvas, we want to put it at the location of where we clicked and dragged the mouse. So mouse x and mouse y. And now we want to call the display method on all of the objects inside the letters array. And all we need to do is that we need to write a for loop that goes from i equals to zero to i less than what less than the length of the letters array right and we can just get that number by doing letters dot length because the length will change every time you drag the mouse all right and then inside here all we need to do is we call all of the object inside the array the display method then let's click run oh what's happening here we forgot something. So let's go back to letters.js. So we call the translate function, which is a transformation function, but we forgot two important functions, push and pop, and push save a transformation. In this case, translate the origin point to this.x and this.y, and then we need to also put in pop to return the setting back to the original setting where the origin is at the top left corner of the canvas before we call translate again to a new this.x and this.y and this way 
now we have all of these letters to make it more interesting why don't we make the letters float and we can do that by changing the x and y location of the letters of each of the letters right so how about we declare two more variables this dot dx and i'm going to randomize it how about between one and five and then this dot dy same thing and this is how we're going to give it a random speed in the x and y direction to each of the letters and then how about we write a new function called update then update is going to be basically just changing the x and y location by adding it to the speed in the x in the y direction right actually instead of doing one to five because one to five both of these are going to give us a positive value so the letters will only move to the right and down so we want to actually do negative five to five so it goes in all directions all right let's try that and then let's go back to sketch.js and make sure that we call the update function all right Ta-da! <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, the next thing that I want to do is that, as you can see here, all of the letters are off the screen, right? But actually, the update and the display methods are still being called. So what we want to do is that we want to actually remove all of the objects that are actually already off the screen so that we're not calling this on something that we cannot see on the screen. So what we can do is that we want to first check which ones are off the screen. So let's come to letters.js. I'm going to write a new method called off screen. And it's basically just going to check our X and Y location. So if this.x is greater than width or this.x is less than zero, and then in the y direction or this dot y is greater than height or this dot y is less than zero then we're going to return true and else return false and then now all we have to do is we have to come back to sketch.js here inside the for loop we want to check if letters of i dot and then the method right off screen is equals to true then we want to remove it from the array and we can do that by using a function called splice and you can just put in the name of the array and then the method splice and then we're going to give two arguments the first one is the index of the object inside the array that we want to remove and then the second one is the number of objects that we want to remove from the array from that index so with one we're only removing the one with the index equals to i so just to show you i'm going to also print letters dot length just to show you that letters are being removed let's click run so now we have you see that it just went down so let's try again one and then this one zero okay so it works but not that great so if you notice here can you see that the letters are kind of flickering and that is because of how we wrote this for loop and we can fix that quite easily. The reason that it's not ideal to put it this way is because let's say that we have an array of size five and then we want to remove an object at index equals to two. Once that one is removed, all the objects to the right gets moved to the left. So now the one that was previously in the third location now is in the index equals to two. But then because we already checked index i equals to two, the next one that we're checking is i equals to three, meaning that the object that gets moved to the location at i equals to two will never be checked and that way it will never be removed and we can fix that quite easily by just reversing the way that we do the for loop so we're going to start the location of i at the last object at letters.length minus one and we're going to loop backwards and this way all of the objects will be checked 
So all we need to do is that we need to start from i equals to letters dot length minus one. And then if i is greater than or equals to zero, then we're going to increment down. And then if I click run, and then I try again, you can see that the flickering problem went away. We can also actually see that the letters kind of just disappear at the end, and that is because I think we need to give it a little bit more margin than this. So let's do, let's set margin to be close to about 20. So we make sure that the letters are off the screen. Actually, we want it to be, how about we want it to be greater than the size here. So let's do size to be equals to 50 right now. So this dot size, and then we're gonna say that margin, let's do this dot size times two. And so if this dot x is greater than width plus this dot, no, plus margin, right? And then this one is minus margin. Same thing for the y plus margin, and then this one is minus margin. And then that problem should go away also. All right, so it's totally off the screen before it disappears. Nice. So now it's time to make it pretty and experiment a little bit. How about that? I want to first change the background color to this yellow here. And I also want to add a few more fonts. So let's just upload it here. One, two. Okay, and we need to do the same thing here. Instead of just setting this as a variable, how about I set it as an array? And then so funds of zero will be this one, and then I'm going to do two more, one and two. And then the second one will be kanit-black.ttf. And then the third one is bebuzzne dash regular okay let's click run everything is still okay but now we need to fix our letter class because instead of using font here we're going to put in this dot f how about that and then here what we need to do is that we need to set this dot f to be a random value inside the fonts class right so I click run. All right, so now we have a few different fonts in here. And then I also want to vary the size. How about we vary the size to be between, actually, I don't want the size to be inside update. I want the size to be set in the constructor function. So this dot size will be a random value between 10 and 30. Okay, then one more thing that I want to add is that I want my letter to actually rotate. So I can put a speed, an angular velocity. So let's set it as angle V, and then I want this to be between one and three. No, actually that might be too much. Let's just do one. So it's between zero and one not including one. And then in update, all we need to do is that we need to increment this dot angle with this dot angle V. Um, I think that should be it. You see, the letter is rotating a bit. And if you want it faster, So there you go. This is your interactive floating letters. And I'm using a letter as the text to write on the screen, but actually this allows you to experiment with different shapes, different elements, whatever you like. I think this is a very fun one, so give it a try.